What's going on everyone, Justin here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be doing a quick overview of the coolant system in my 2011 Lotus Evora. It's basically gonna be the same across um, all the Evoras with the exception of the GTs and the 400s that had the introduction of the charge cooler and then also an auxiliary radiator. So this one's a little bit simpler, but it's basically all the same. Um, with the front clamshell exposed, as I'm doing restoration on this car, it'll be really easy to see the components. So I'm gonna start with a component overview and then filling the filling process, which I think Lotus charged like $1,000 for. I'm hoping uh, it's gonna go pretty easy. I have some special tools and uh, I'll be using them for the first time in this application. So we'll see how that goes. So I'll kind of chronicle that and you'll get to enjoy the ride along with me. So stand by, I'll be jumping right in. Lotus Evora cooling system. This is an upgraded wizard radiator. So not stock, the stock one was damaged in the accident that I had um, and so basically um, that's why this looks different so this is an all aluminum one but the factory one is going to be basically in the same spot you have the two radiator hoses that secure this to the front follows along hard pipes there's a bleeder valve over here there's a bleeder valve on this side so two bleeder valves this one also has a drain at the bottom the factory one has a plug but you can remove the plug and you can drain coolant out the bottom of this this is the coolant pack coolant pack, whatever, charging pack. Um, basically, it's comprised of the fan shroud and fan assembly radiator. You would have the charge cooler in here, then the condenser, and your power steering cooler, which I have disconnected right now. So that's basically that. That's a, all one unit, essentially. So that's the, uh, the front of the car. If you go all the way in the back, where the hard lines go to the engine. Um, this is really all I'm going to be playing with is the coolant tank. Coolant tank, my plan is to pressurize this, make sure that there's no leaks. If there's no leaks, then I'm going to be introducing vacuum and adding coolant in through that. Okay, not sure how many people are going to be affected by this, but this is an aftermarket wizard radiator that I've installed in my Lotus. The 2011 uh, Lotus Evora S1 has this same port, but it's blocked off from the factory. So I don't know why the aftermarket radiator has it. Um, the auxiliary radiator doesn't plumb off of that, as far as I know anyway. I don't know what other features would use this. Um, so not sure why they incorporated it, but regardless, um, it is there. It does blow through on the S1 stock one. It's, it's blocked off, you can't blow through it. So that's an easy way to test. Um, what I've done is I got a 1 8 tap and that fits pretty much perfectly in there. You can see I already have the threads cut and basically I'm just gonna block it off. So I'm gonna use green Loctite, which is a sealant, it's not permanent, and then I'm gonna put a nipple on top of it for good measure, because I obviously don't want this thing leaking from there. All right, so here's the end result. Because I like to invent scenarios in my head that'll never happen, I was worried about this uh, 1 8 uh, threaded all the way through, um, putting in a, a plug, that the plug was gonna fall into the cooling system. So I doubled up on tape towards the end, um, it's not tapered, it was just a straight plug. So I doubled up on the tape so that I could only thread it in so far. Um, and then I put a, a cap on top of that. So it's plugged, sealed, capped, zip tied. That's not going anywhere. Um, I'm gonna test it out now. So I have my uh, pressure tester here. Uh, it was a universal kit and this is the Toyota cap. It's the first one I picked out of the, uh, the box and it worked perfectly. So um, these parts, I guess they tend to be either Toyota or Ford, right? It's kind of a mishmash with the Lotus stuff, but let's see if I could set the camera up. And I'm gonna pressure test this. So just get the little pump here. Start to pump it up. And I could hear some coolant pushing through the system already. Now, air compresses, it's probably gonna take a while to get this pumped up by hand, but that's okay. <sighs> Looks like I'm building pressure. So that's about two PSI now, just about. We're gonna go to, uh, let's say 10. And I'm gonna see if this holds uh, within like 10 minutes. So it's 10.31 PM right now. 
Check it again at 1040. In the meantime, checking along the bulkhead, coolant pipes, these fittings, the radiator itself. Everything looks good, so I'm going to uh, stop, put some more stuff together in the car while I'm waiting, and then revisit this in 10 minutes. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, and still at 10 PSI, so that's a good sign. I'm going to disconnect this, I'm going to move on to this, and basically this is a um, vacuum coolant fill. Uh, and basically the way it works, I hook the compressor up here. This is going to go to the same cap that's adapted to the top of the coolant uh, reservoir. And then this tube is going to go into my coolant. And basically the way it works is I open up these ports. And after I've created vacuum, the coolant is basically going to be sucked in to the uh, vacuum that was created within the coolant system. Pretty cool. I've never actually used it before. So this should be fun. We'll get it set up. And see how it works. Okay, really cool. Here's the uh, hookup. Basically, compressor in here. This goes to the cap. And I open up this valve so that this is connected here. And then the compressor blows air through and creates a Venturi effect that draws vacuum. And so you can see I'm at negative 22 psi. And now all I have to do is run this into my coolant, open up this valve. And it should draw it right in. The coolant I'm using, um, I forgot the exact spec. It's like Havoline uh, extended service, originally spec from Lotus, but I looked it up. This is compatible too. So this is the Toyota Red Pink. This is Premix. Don't have to add any uh, water. Um, and it is the organic acid technology or OAT, which is the spec. And so I'm basically going to just pop the top off of this. I have uh, five gallons, which I think is the full capacity. There was some coolant left in the system. And uh, basically, we're going to just start drawing it in. Okay, process has started. Opens up. And it's drawing coolant in. You hear gushing right in, right through the top. Pretty cool. So just got to make sure it doesn't run out. Keep this at the bottom. Well, that's the first gallon. Just rinse and repeat until this is full. All right, so I got about two and a half gallons using this method. And it looks like I have to create more vacuum in order to uh, continue. But um, in the meantime, I was actually just going to pop these bleeder screws off and see where I'm at. Uh, one interesting side effect that I didn't even think of these hoses under vacuum, they collapsed. So I manually went over here and kind of massaged them open to see if that would help draw coolant through. Didn't really seem to make much of a difference. Um, but here are the bleeder screws. They're kind of like Schrader valves. I'm gonna get something and stick it in there. Let's see what I got, an Allen key. Let's see if any fluid comes out. It's sprayed, I know it. Oh, just here's some air. All right, well, nothing came out, so that means there's not coolant in, in these pipes yet. So I'm going to keep power filling it using vacuum. Yeah, nothing, not even air. All right, yeah, just going to keep trying to bleed it. Let some air out of these things and uh, see how it goes. And that's why you leak test. Looks like the uh, getting a drip from the heater core. All right, gotta check those clamps. All right, I'm currently going for broke. 15 psi charge now. No more leaks. I'm gonna make sure of it before I put this all back together, because obviously I don't want to have to get back in here after I put the front clamshell on. Um, since this is all under pressure now, 15 PSI, uh, I'm going to try to power bleed these. So I'm going to get the bucket under there, push down on this, 
15 PSI of air is going to be pushing behind that. And uh, I'm going to try to get as much air out of the system as I can. So I'll just uh, keep doing that, charging it, bleeding it, refilling the uh, overflow. See how it goes. I also recognize that there are bleeders here for the heater core. So I'll be uh, opening those as well. All right, I'm hesitant to call this done because I could still hear air kind of sloshing around the system, but I've bled it as much as I can without actually starting the engine. So that's the next logical step, unfortunately, is just to run it and then uh, continue to try to bleed it from there. So I did power bleed these under pressure. Got a good amount of air, uh, amount of air out, got the air out of here, both sides and topped off the reservoir. Got about three and a half gallons in. Uh, so I'm gonna stop with the coolant system. I'm gonna get back to the oil line, power steering, and hopefully start this thing and uh, keep bleeding it tonight. So uh, pick it up in the next video. If you like this, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.